20 minutes after the hour here on Wake Up With Al. You know, every time you fly, weather plays a critical part on your flight, not only before you board, but while you're up in the midair. Uh, that is right. So there is new technology that we want to tell you about here for your next trip. Joining us, the newest member of our Weather Channel family, Dave Malkoff, got a chance to catch up to see this technology up close and personal. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the whole family. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. Good morning, Al. Good morning, Stephanie. Yes, we got to get on that plane. The technology is pretty cool. It's cutting edge. We got to sit there right in the cockpit as it was taking off to see how it works. Check it out. Doors are all armed. Thank you. To really understand how to avoid a storm on your next flight, you have to fly into a storm on this one. It's a test aircraft out of Phoenix, Arizona. One with all the extra radar stations where the passenger seats should be. I, I would fly through this red area here. My name is Helmut Egeling. I'm a test pilot for Honeywell. We're flying from Atlanta down to the Gulf Coast purposely into the path of that thunderstorm. So we're flying as close as we can to this thunderstorm but then around it, right? Yes. We're about 30 miles out right now, but at 8 miles a minute, we want to head toward that. It doesn't take long before we're right on top of that storm. This uh, reversed comma or whatever it is, that's hail. Hail's very dangerous for an aircraft. It can damage uh, the windshield. It can cause damage to the front leading edge of the, uh, the wings as well as damage the, the nose cone. If, if you're getting hit by hail, you're also being hit by turbulence. Brennan Kilty is a radar engineer here to explain the upgraded 3D radar system they call Interview. Don't all planes have something like this on it right now? Yeah, transport aircraft generally have weather radars. Now in the past, pilots would have to control the radar manually. With these new systems, the computer does the math, creating a 3D map of the bad weather ahead. If you are in clouds like this, you don't see where you're, you're getting into. Now, what this new technology allows the pilot to do is virtually open up their aircraft, take a piece of 3D weather out from about 60 nautical miles, look at it, examine it, see how dangerous it is, and then avoid it all together. So all that you're left to do is to react to the weather. So the captain sees the storm and pulls up. Are we right next to the storm at this point? We are over it. We're over the storm. Yeah. This is what's under the plane, and this is where we are now. You can see there's a reduction. Most of the time you would try and fly over weather. Yeah, you definitely want to fly over that instead of right into it. Now, there is a potential that this technology could save you time and money as well. The theory is if the pilots don't have to mess with all that bad weather, instead of going all the way around the storm, they can just go over it because they can see what the difference is at the altitude they, they want to go to, and that can get you to your destination much faster. That's what they tell me, Alan Steph. Yeah, and, and Dave, I'm, because the airlines have such a great history of giving us money back. So oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And they save money. Especially Dave, when, when they charge you for the peanuts, right? Uh, right. <laughs> isn't there a certain distance as these planes... I mean, they can only go so far around or so high above these thunderstorms, correct? Yeah, I mean, you've seen those maps with, with all the different air traffic going all over the United States and all over the world at the same time. They have to get clearance from air traffic control and from the other airlines to make sure that they're not you know, flying into the flight path of anyone. They can't just take over the entire sky. They have to go in a certain path. So basically, the time that it takes you to get from one place to another is is the time that it takes. All right, thanks so much, Dave. Hey, let's check our quickly our